Father, Son, and the of God to be but one, that through the ages all alone thy praise may be all in all In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory to be the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Let us read responsibly Psalm 51, page number 124. Psalm 51, page number 124. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash, Wash me through from, from my wickedness and, and cleanse me from, from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you only how I sin and done what is in your sight. sight. And so you're justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean in thee. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me me not not away away from from your presence, presence, and and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall shall teach teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners sinners shall return return to you. Deliver me from the dead, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open, Open my, my lips, O Lord, Lord, and my, my mouth shall proclaim your praise. praise. Had you desire it, I would offer sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The, the sacrifice, sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion, and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. The you will be pleased with the appointments of our sacrifices, sacrifices and burnt offerings, then shall they offer them full of sacrifice to the altar. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Kindly be seated. Today is a Pentecostal Sunday. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62. Brother B. Paul Kropagar will come and read it out for us. I, from Isaiah, chapter 62 verses from beginning to end.
tenth course on Sunday. The first lesson is uh, taken from the book of Prophet Isaiah, sixty uh, second chapter. the son sake will not hold my peace and for the Jewish name sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and salvation thereof as the lamp that burneth and the gentiles shall see the righteousness all the kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall lay. Thou shalt also be the crown of the glory in the Lord of the Lord, a royal diamond in the hand of the God. Thou shalt not more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and the land Beulah, for the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man married a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, we shall be ever hold thy Peace day or night, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest, till the establish, till he make the Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord hath sworn by his right hand, and by the arm of his strength, surely I will not no more give thy corn to be mere for the time and miss. The son of the stranger shall not drink thy wine, for the which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat, and praise the Lord. They that have brought it together shall drink in the courts of my holiness. Go through and through, and the gates prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up, the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, say ye to the daughter of the Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call the, the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city of her second. Here is the first lesson. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is taken from the epistle of Paul to Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 23. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 23. Sunita Garu will come and read out for us. Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with 
with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made as accepted in the beloved blood, in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the misery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fulfillness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the, his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in, his, in this age but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the, full, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Thank you. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is, lesson is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 7. M. Savitri Garu will come and read out for us. John chapter 15, verses 1 to 7. Let us all rise for the gospel reading. Already you are clean 
because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abide in me and I in him, he it is that bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This lesson ends. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Let us all say the Nicene, Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of gods, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate with the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us, and upon the Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day rose again according to scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and seated on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who speak by the prophets, and I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Kindly be seated. Dear friends, once again I greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This evening we have a special speaker, Mrs. P. Dorothy Jadogaru. She is also a regular speaker in our Vespers. She brings the message this evening. I requested her two days before, although she accepted my request. We move on to meditation. We all sing together hymn number 89, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. My soul praise him for his good health and salvation. Let all who hear now to his temple go near, joining in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who heard all things 
God of holiness, God of great mercies, God of loving kindness, we thank thee, we praise thee, we bless thee in this precious hour of thee. <laughs> we thank thee for the dear son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice on the cross. We thank thee for the Holy Spirit. And the spirit of thine gives us strength and boldness to be thy witnesses in this world. Dear Father, grant us thy grace, grant us thy peace, grant us thy blessings on all of us. I ask this small prayer in the precious name of thy dear son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord and good evening to all of you. Today is Pentecost Sunday. That means the 50th day after Easter. Today is celebrated as the day of descent of the Holy Spirit. The early church, that is the disciples, after Jesus ascended into heaven, they waited for 10 days. And on this day, the day of Pentecost, when they were in the city of Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit descended on them. This day is the birthday of the church. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom about the Holy Word of God. The Holy Spirit makes us to obey to his word. The Holy Spirit counsels us. The Holy Spirit comforts us. The Holy Spirit gives us 
a boldness and courage to be the witnesses in this world, the world which hates the Jesus Christ and the Holy World. Coming to today's lessons, today's lessons are like this. Old Testament lesson is drawn from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, the entire chapter. Epistle lesson is taken from St. Paul's letter to Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 23. Gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. Coming to the Old Testament lesson, this is uh, a prophecy about uh, the nation Israel. The nation Israel was the election and choice of God. It is a will, a plan, and a purpose of God. The nation of Israel is the will of God, the plan of God, and the purpose of God. To stand out as a holy nation for holy God. To stand out as the holy nation for the holy God. Filled with righteousness and justice. The important thing about the nation Israel was the nation to be filled with righteousness and justice. For this purpose, the Israel was given, the people of God were given the law. This is the law of Moses. The law provides for the reverence towards God, worshipping the only true God, not turning towards false idols, justice in the society, no exploitation of poor and downtrodden, righteousness in the behavior towards God and fellow human beings, righteousness in the behavior towards God and towards fellow human beings. But they failed. As a punishment of reforming the nation, God sent them to exile, exile to the country of Babylon. Exile is not an end, but there was a new beginning, a new hope, a new joy, a new identity as God had promised. The new beginning after coming back to their own land, a new hope, a new joy, a new identity. This God had promised to them through the prophet Isaiah. Our present lesson today speaks about this. This is a message of hope of restoration. The prophecy is about the promise of God. Because today's lessons are lengthy passages, I restrict my reflection, my message to some reflections on the core ideas of these three lessons. God himself will bring back the people of Israel. In verses 1 and 2, we see this. It is not their own strength, it is not their own power that they came back to their land, but God himself will bring people from exile 
to their country. God himself gives Israel a new name. Out of their popularity, they did not get a new name, but God himself gave them a new name in verses 4 and 5. Hepsiba, my delight is in her, and Beulah, married. These two names carry a prominent idea. God is pleased with the nation. God will be pleased with the nation after their restoration. And they have to be faithful. The name Beulah means married. The idea of marriage explains two things. Marriage is a love and faithfulness. Marriage is a love and faithfulness towards each other in that bond, marriage bond. Here, God calls Israel as Beulah. That means they should remain faithful to the holy God. Old names not remembered. They were forsaken. They were desolate. In Hebrew, forsaken, Azuba, desolate, Shamama. Third point, God will rejoice over Israel. God will be happy with the restored nation. Verse 5. Israel will be prominent throughout the earth because they exhibit, they are witnesses to the light and righteousness of the holy God. God will make Israel an abundant nation, no famine, no shortage of food. Everything will be abundant. There will be plentifulness of food. And salvation comes through Zion, that means Israel. This is in verse 10 and 11. Israel will be called the holy people redeemed of the Lord, verse 12. These last verses foreshadow the redeeming work of Jesus Christ as Son of Man. The Israel is not restored by their own strength, but by the promise of God. Israel is restored by the promise of God, by the mighty arm of God. The glory and greatness belongs to all-powerful God, God of Israel. The God of Israel is all-powerful God who restored his people to their land and through them he sent the Savior to the world to fulfill his will, his plan, and his purpose of redemption of the old world. Coming to the epistle lesson, here in these verses, we see what the church is, what the Christians are, what the believers are. We see the church as the corporate body, individuals as well as the corporate of all believers, the corpus of all believers, the all of all believers. We see here the selection of church by God the Father. God selected, God called out the church. We are the will, we are the plan, and we are the purpose of God the Father, redeemed by the sacrifice of God the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, as a man of, as a son of man, he sacrificed himself 
on the cross, he shed his blood and he redeemed us by his blood. He rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated on the right hand of God the Father. The church is sealed for eternal glory by God the Holy Spirit. We see the church as the selection of God, the sacrifice of Son, God the Father, the sacrifice of God the Son, and being sealed by the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. Coming to some points in these verses, church in the plan of God. What is church in the plan of God? Chosen in Christ. God has chosen us in his son, Jesus Christ. To be holy, to be blessed, verses 3 and 4. God has chosen us to be his heritage, his inheritance, verse 5. Chosen in Christ to be God's honor. We are the honor of God. The church, that means we are the honor of God, verse 6. Secondly, church in the purpose of Christ. We have seen the plan of God. We, now we see the church in the purpose of God. Divine purpose is expressed in the redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ, verse 7. Jesus shed his blood on the cross to redeem us. This is the divine purpose for us. Nature of redemption includes forgiveness. God forgave our sins because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. This forgiveness, because God forgave us, we have to forgive others. This is the purpose of, of Christ in redemption. We are released from the guilt of sin by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Thirdly, redemption gives us the knowledge about uh, mysteries and their revelation. Verses 9 and 10. What is that mystery? Something is there for us in heaven. Something is there for us in heaven. That is our inheritance. That is our inheritance. That is our eternity. That is our future living. Verses 9 and 10. And knowledge about the love of God and the grace of God. Love of God is a mystery to the world. Grace of God is a mystery to the world. The world outside the church do not know what is love. The world outside the church do not know what is grace. We, the believers, came to know about the love of God and the grace of God through the redemption by the blood of Jesus Christ. And fourthly, divine purpose is expressed in hope and glory. Verses 11 to 14 gives us this explanation. What is this? We, those who believed in Lord Jesus Christ, we heard the truth of salvation 
gospel of salvation. We have heard the gospel of salvation. We have believed in Jesus Christ. And we are marked by the seal of the Holy Spirit. This is the hope of Christians in this world waiting for the future glory in heaven. The divine purpose is expressed in hope and glory. Present hope and future glory. Christians, we, the church, we have the hope in present of the glory in the future. The Holy Spirit stands as the guarantee to that glory. The Holy Spirit stands as the guarantee of that eternal glory, heritage, and inheritance. What is guarantee the Holy Spirit gives us? We are secure, we are sure about our future glory. The seal of the Holy Spirit gives us security. We are sure, we are secure about our future glory. We are sure about the belonging to be the possession of God. The Holy Spirit authenticates us to be the possession of God. We belong to God. The church belongs to God. We belong to God. The Christians belong to God. And verses 15 to 19, the action of the church, the role of the church, the church in prayer, the confidence in prayer. We are sustained by faith in Lord Jesus Christ, verse 15 to 16. The confidence in Jesus sustains us in the prayer life. We are sustained by the prayer. We are sustained by the confidence. We are illuminated by the truth. We are sustained in faith. We are illuminated by the truth. The truth about salvation, the truth about the redemptive plan of God through his son, Jesus Christ, illuminates us about divine truth, the truth of God. It enlightens us to the call of holy living. The church, we, the Christians, are called to the holy life in this world. This is the fundamental aspect of a Christian life in this world. We are called to live a holy life. We are called to live a holy life. And church is active. Church is dynamic. Verse 19 speaks about this. Church is not a sleeping body or an inactive organization. It is always active. We are always active. We are always the dynamic force. The dynamic power and the activeness of the church is brought to us by the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is an active force, the dynamic power. The dynamic power and the activeness of the Holy Spirit symbolically expressed in the 
terms wind and fire wind and fire wind is dynamic wind is active the holy spirit makes us to be active makes us to be dynamic in the mission of christ we have to continue the mission through the power of the holy spirit and we have to proclaim to the world the transforming grace and his amazing love the church we the christians are to proclaim to the world the transforming grace of god and an amazing love of god this is our fundamental duty as the church finally church is the fullness of christ church is the fullness of christ divine power in the resurrection of jesus divine power in the ascension of jesus christ divine authority in the exaltation of jesus christ is at the right hand of god the father in the heaven he rules over the world believers are non believers all nations all the people the old world the whole universe is under the feet of lord jesus christ the concluding verses of today's epistle lesson clearly says he is seated on the right hand of god the father he is given an authority to rule the world entire world entire universe all things are under the feet of lord jesus christ the divine fullness is further explained in another symbolism he is the head and we are the body christ is the head and we are the body christ headship is exalted and praised and verse 23 says about the fullness of church in christ christ is all and all in all for us christ is all and all in all and coming to the gospel lesson the gospel lesson gives us another symbolism jesus christ said that he is the vine and his believers are the branches the vine symbolism is a very popular one easy to understand in times of jesus christ israel is famous for grape harvest almost in those days every home or every garden has some grape plants they know how to tend how to care for grape plants jesus used this symbolism to explain the oneness or the unity of himself and his believers even the old testament uses this symbolism in isaiah 5th chapter we see that god planted a good vine that is the nation of israel but they yielded wild fruits god planted a good vine the nation of israel but they yielded 
they gave the harvest of wild fruits because of the disobedience they disobeyed and they caused displeasure they caused sadness to god the result was exile god out of his promise out of his mercy out of his love for the nation he restored them and through them he sent to this world his dear son jesus christ and jesus further said branches are organically connected to the vine not mechanically assembled not to be separated and again reassembled branches are organically connected to the stem the major plant they derive life and strength to give fruits unless branches have the life and the strength of the vine they cannot give fruits there are two kinds of branches some branches are fruitful some branches are unfruitful what god will do with the fruitful branches and unfruitful branches god will prune the fruitful branches god will cleanse or cut or prune or tend the fruitful branches and he will remove the unfruitful branches because of the pruning of the unwanted stuff the fruitful branches will give more fruit we know after the rose plant in our pots or in our garden after the bloom blooming of rose flowers what we do to get more roses we cut the dried up flower and instead of one flower we get four flowers because it will give more uh, branches and we get more flowers god will prune the fruitful branches so that those branches give much fruit god will remove unfruitful branches what is this pruning how this is uh, pruned we are pruned by the word of god we are pruned by the word of god the pruning knife in our christian life is the word of god the writer of hebrews mentions that the word of god is more sharper than the double edged sword and it cuts deep into the soul and the spirit and the bone and the marrow the word of god is sharper than the double edged sword and it cuts deep into the soul and spirit and the bone and marrow and cleanses our thoughts and cleanses our mind the word of god the pruning knife the word of god cleanses our thoughts it cuts it removes all unwanted stuff all waste stuff in our minds in our souls and makes us fruitful and makes us fruitful for our lord jesus christ to continue his mission in this world and what will happen to the totally useless branches they will be removed from the vine they will be there away they will be dried up in the hot sun they will dry up 
this image is, this symbolism is, this imagery is very popular in the times of Jesus Christ. What is this? A dried up life. No life, no strength of the word of God and holy living. No work of Holy Spirit in our life. No obedience towards the word of God. If there is no obedience to the word of God, if there is no obedience to the word of God, we cannot have a life and strength to live as Christians in this world. If we are removed from the vine, if we are separated from the Jesus Christ, the vine and the branches are inseparable, organically connected. We and the Lord Jesus Christ, we are connected, organically connected. He is the head and we are his body. And we derive our strength and we derive our life from him. If we have no life, no strength given to us by the Holy Spirit, our life is like a dried up twigs. What will be done with the dried up twigs, dried up branches? A farmer collects all the things and he burns fire and he throws them into the fire. The fire ends them. The fire symbolism is also very prominent today because on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples in the form of wind and in the form of fire divided into tongues. The fire descended upon the disciples look it like tongues. Here, we have to remember the words of John the Baptist. He said, I am baptizing you with water, but the one who comes after me, he baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and the fire. Fire has two connotations. It cleanses us, it punishes us. Fire has the cleansing power. If we are gold, we are refined through the fire. If we are dried up twigs, we are burnt in the judgment fire. If we are the fine gold, we become much finer gold by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we are like dried up twigs, hellfires are awaiting those who are disobedient, those who are separated from Jesus Christ. Today being the Holy Spirit day, the birthday of the church, let us uh, remain obedient to the word of God. Let us remain faithful to the promise of God and let us uh, continue our holy living by the power of the Holy Spirit. Finally, I acknowledge my sincere thanks to our respected clergy, Reverend Anandra Vaigaru, 
and Reverend Prasadra Aigaru, especially to Reverend Anandra Aigaru. Aigaru, thank you very much for the spiritual nourishment you have given us throughout these six years. We ever remain grateful to you for your spiritual nourishment. Thank you all. The peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen. Kindly be seated. This evening, we heard a wonderful and inspiring message by Mrs. P. Dorothy Jadavagaru. Once again, thank you very much, madam. It's time to give special offerings to the Lord, those who are prepared to offer special offerings. Please come forward. If not, while we all sing to you. Hymn number 99, give our offerings to the Lord. Have thy own way, Lord. Him. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the
Precious Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this gift of life. Thank you for being with us through this worship, Lord. You said where two or three gather in your name, they'll be there in the midst. I thank you for being in our midst and being in us, Lord. Thank you for the word you have given, to your, you have delivered to your servant, Lord. Let the seed plant on us yield hundredfold. Lord, help us to pray continually, Lord. Till we, till we are delivered from us from a bondage, yes, my Father. Help us to claim the, every promise that is given in the Scripture, my Father. Every promise in its essence as man in Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. You had sealed us with the seal of the Holy Ghost, my Father, so that our identity is that we belong to Lord Jesus Christ, who adopted as sons and daughters in the family of God. And we have an eternal inheritance, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are the vine, Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. And you provide us everything for us, Lord, to, for us to grow and to bear fruit. Help us always to be in connection to you, my Father so that we may bear much fruit in you. Lord, at this time, I pray to receive the praise of the church. Deliver us from all adversity and error. Help us to worship you with full authority. Thank you for calling every one of us into your holiness by sharing in your divine nature. Fill us with a true sense of dignity as your sons and daughters in this world. Help us to be ambassadors of your ambassadors of love and justice and peace in this world. Lord, may we be your witness of your love in our families, at our workplaces, and in the society. Precious Heavenly God, hear our supplication. Grant us all the things needed for our spiritual welfare. Strengthen and increase our faith. I pray for the ministers of church, Lord. Lord, at this moment, I pray especially for our parish pastor, my father, who has been transferred, dear Lord. Grant him a suitable congregation which is according to your plan, Lord. You open a door for him, my father, so that, Lord, he will be blessed and bring many people to God, dear Lord. Lord, I also pray for the other pastor, Thomas Prem Sagargaru, Lord, thank you for giving him a parish, my father. Lord, I also pray, dear Lord, for the pastor's families, both the pastor's family. Bless the families, Lord. Lord, provide them all, they, all that they need in this world, Lord. I pray that peace prevails in our congregation. Lord, I pray for the elders, the deacons, the chain person, the treasures in its church, Lord. Help them to administer the congregation according to your will. I pray for the old people. As they are growing old and the strength is weakening, Lord, help them to find comfort and love in the near and dear ones. Lord, I pray for young people. Lord, give them good careers, my Father. This is a time for them to embrace you, my Father. Let them not turn to the right or to the left, my Father. Let them look straight ahead at you, my Father, dear Lord, and find true love from you. I pray for the children, Lord. 
Lord, you love little children very much. Lord, as a growing up, my father, help them to find power in your sight and the sight of men too. Lord, I pray for the sick in the congregation. Lord, give them speedy recovery. I pray for everyone, those who are in hospitals suffering with chronic diseases, my father. Lord, give them relief, my father. Touch them and give them healing, my father. Also pray for the nation, Lord. Lord, bless this mighty nation of yours, my father. Protect the boundaries of a nation. Lord, I pray for the prime minister, chief ministers of different states, and all those people on authority. Grant them good health and give them wisdom to administer the nation according to your will. Also pray for every Christian nation, my father. Let a great revival flow through each and every country, my father. Lord, I also pray, my father, for the Gentile nations, Lord. Let them know the truth, and the truth and will set them free. The truth is this, my father, there is only one God, and there is only one mediator between God and his people, that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray also that the war be stopped with Russia and Ukraine, Lord. Uh, at last, Lord, I pray for, for the offerings your people are giving, offer to, uh, are brought to your presence, Lord. Accept these offerings. Let these offerings be used for the exchange of your kingdom, Lord. As they brought it cheerfully, Lord, you bless them, Lord. Once again, I submit everyone into thy supernatural hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, all just works to proceed, give unto thy servants at peace, which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey the commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness to the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee, with the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Ghost rest and abide with us now and evermore. Amen. While we remain standing, the order of public confession to the participate of Holy Communion. Those who are not able to participate the Holy Communion, you can take leave calmly. Order of public confession. Dear beloved, for as much as we purpose to come to the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, it becometh us diligently to examine ourselves, as St. Paul exerted us. For this holy sacrament hath been instituted for the special comfort and strengthening of those who humbly confess their sins and who hunger and thirst after righteousness. 
But if we thus examine ourselves, we shall find in us nothing but sin and death, from which we can in no way set ourselves free. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ hath had mercy upon us, and hath taken upon himself our nature, that so he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and for us and for our deliverance suffer death, and all that we by our sins have deserved, and to the end that we should be more confidently believe this, and be strengthened by our faith in cheerful obedience to his will. He hath instituted the holy sacrament of his supper, in which he giveth us his body to eat and his blood to drink. Therefore, who so eateth of this bread and drinketh of this cup, firmly believing the words of Christ, dwelleth in Christ and Christ in him, and hath eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised again of for our justification and rendering unto him most hearty thanks for the same. Take up our cross and follow him and according to his commandment, love one another even as he hath loved us. For we are all one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink of this one cup. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthy magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ, the Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess before the Lord. I ask you in the presence of Almighty God who searcheth the heart, do you truly acknowledge, confess and lament that you are by nature sinful and that by omitting to do good and by doing evil you have in thought, word and deed, grieved and offended your God and Savior the, and they by justly deserved his condemnation, if this be the sincere confession of your hearts, declare it by saying, yes. Yes. Do you truly believe that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, and that all who believe in his name receive the forgiveness of sins? Do you therefore earnestly desire to be delivered from all your sins and our you confident that it, it is the grace, gracious will of your heavenly Father for Christ's sake to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If so, confess it by saying yes. Yes. Let us humbly stand and make confession unto God, imploring his forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us all say together the prayer. O oh God, Lord, our Lord, Heavenly Lord, Father, I confess unto thee that I have grievously sinned against thee in many ways, not only by outward transgression, but also by secret thoughts and desires which I cannot fully understand, but which are all known unto thee, I do earnestly repent, and I am heartily sorry for these my offenses. We beseech thee of thy great goodness of to have mercy upon me, and for the sake of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to forgive my sins and grievously to help my infirmities. Amen. The absolution. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and for the sake of the sufferings, death and resurrection of his dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, forgive us all our sins as a minister 
of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you who do truly repent and believe in him the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. On the other hand, by the same authority, I declare unto the impenitent and unbelieving that so long as they continue in their impenitence, God hath not forgiven their sins and will assuredly visit their iniquities upon them if they turn not from their evil ways and come to true repentance and faith in Christ before the way day of grace be ended. Let us continue the order of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And with the, with the Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up unto, unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is, it is meet and right so, so to, to do. do. Through Jesus Christ, thy dear Son, our Lord and Savior, who ascending above the heavens and sitting at thy right hand, poured out the Holy Spirit as he had promised upon the chosen disciples. Whereas the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, our thanks. Give in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the enemy. In the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had said, and when he had given thanks, we said, drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O Christ, the Lamb of God, 
Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for thee. Take and drink. This is the blood of the New Testament shed for thy sins. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto everlasting life. Amen. Go and serve the Lord prayerfully. Any more? Shall we all stand and sing together, none demits. Lord, Lord, now let us though thy servant depart in peace, according to 
unto the Lord for he is good and his and mercy, mercy endureth forever. forever we give thanks to thee almighty God that thou hast refreshed us with this thy salutary gift and we beseech thee of thy mercy to strengthen us through the same in faith towards thee and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, thy dear Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless with the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Praise for 